that's the state of the filter now after all this mess as you can see and dust has actually gone past the free motor filter as you can see so that's not very good is it the filtration is lacking on this dco2 What's going on everyone? It's your favorite vacuum peeling. Today I'm going to show you the beautifully elegant Dyson DCO2 Dish Deal Limited Edition Vacuum. This is the vacuum floor tool. That's what it looks like underneath. There's a mark on the front but that will come off with magic eraser. It is quite well used as you can see. Quite scratched up on either side of the floor tool. As you can see on the base it says made in front so that's very cool to know. This is a dual mode floor tool so it's designed to be used on all floors without any adjustment. There's no pedals or anything to adjust. See these scattered gapped bristles, you can't really do anything about those unless you want to cut them off, they just stay there permanently. These floor tools don't really stick to the floor that well because they have gaps on either side for edge cleaning purposes. It's got the older Dyson logo and the wand release extension thing. And it is telescopic as you can see, so you can extend it further like that. This is so simple, everything's just friction fit, there's no buttons or anything to attach everything together. So you just pull it off like a Henry or normal cylinder. Here's a banana handle. You've got a swivel point right there, so it just spins around, and same on the hose cuff end as well. Press these two buttons on either side of the hose cuff, and then the hose can be removed like so for blockage inspection. And this little trigger on the bottom is your suction release valve. It's a bit stiff, but yeah. There's a helpline sticker as well, which is also expired. It's the same one as on my DCO one dish still. And here's the vacuum unit itself. As you can see, there's a Dyson logo with dual cyclone technology as a logo. It's quite retro, doesn't it? I like that. There's a sticker on the cyclone showing you why bags are ineffective compared to dual cyclone technology. But obviously, paper bags back then were ineffective, weren't they? This looks quite 90s as well. It reminds me of vintage Miele's where the hose swivels on the machine end like that at an angle. These machines were huge, you know. They're the hugest Dyson cylinder ever made. If I was to put this in front of a DCO7 for context, you can see how massive it is. That's huge. Look at the size of that. Yeah, that's how big they are. And if I take the cycle off this DCO7, look at the size comparison. They're huge. And that's how tall it is up to there. There's a Dyson logo again with the DCO2 branding along with the Dish Deal branding saying it's limited edition. There's your power switch on the side and on the other side opposite to that you've got the cable rewind but to be honest I don't need to use that because there's a plug by the way. I feel like most DCO2s these days they have a problem where the cable rewinds in by itself and if you press this yellow button on the back you got access to all your tools. So here's a little tiny crevice tool. It's got the older Dyson logo on it for some reason. The Dustin brush, which also has the older Dyson logo on it for some reason. And it has a twistable neck like so. And also your stair tool with the Dyson logo from the 90s as well. And that's exactly the same as the DCR1 stair tool. And despite this being Dyson's first cylinder, you'd have thought that they progressed over time with tool storage. But no, I feel like this is the best tool storage because it has proper locations on the back and it has a cover that clips into place so they don't get lost. Now, if you push on this catch right here, this is a huge, chunky, hefty catch. Look at that. It's a proper thing, isn't it? That's the mechanism inside. That is what you call a proper high quality clip. So this is your cyclone and bin. It just separates like so. You've got your big, huge cyclone there with the shroud and this is your huge bin as well. So you can just empty out like a jug. The bottom chamber here is where the fine dirt gets collected. So when the dirt enters the shroud, this red part right here where all the holes are, the dust in the air spins around in the cyclone and all the fine dirt exits the bottom of the cone right here and it gets collected in that middle chamber right there. And it's nice to see on these older Dysons how much fine dirt you pick up because on the new Dysons you have to really slowly open the bin flap in order to see. But with these, you can see very easily how much fine dirt you pick up. So it just sits in that compartment right there. You've got two little bleed valves as well for when there's anything helplessly attached to the vacuum. This is the power switch, that's the actual power switch because the main one is just a dummy thing. It's just a plastic thing that pushes a arm down as you can see. And that arm right there pushes the actual switch down. So this is your pre-motor filter. Again, I love how it's color coded to match the vacuum. That's where the air exits the cyclone by the way. And it goes down this tube out through here, down here into the pre-motor filter and that's where everything's captured. And then through these vents right here, you got the motor inside this compartment and then finally you've got the post motor filter which slides out it's the HEPA filter and that's meant to be replaced every 12 months as you can see and it's got a bacteria killing screen as well so it kills germs on contact i don't know why dyson stopped doing these amazing features antibacterial filters surely that's a good thing do you know what i mean 
And do you know what? These DCL2s weren't really highly rated, but to be honest, I do like these vacuums. I just wish that they had a bit more suction, a bit more of a powerful motor, and then they would have been quite decent machines, to be honest, because they were quite solid. The only thing that really broke on these is the end of the handle right here. See this spout that sticks out? These would just snap in half, and then the end of the plastic would just get stuck in the wand right here. So if they had a stronger handle and a more powerful motor, these machines would have been incredibly advanced with their time. You got nice rubber wheels as well, so that's a nice, beautiful feature. The cable is original, even though it looks like it's not. I don't know why they've done the cable grey when they've done it purple on the other digital models, but at least the plug is red to match the vacuum cleaner. There's a sticker. These stickers are mint, all right, but I had it leaning against my wardrobe in... Uh, I had it on top of my wardrobe, right, and it was hanging off and leaning against the wall, so it scraped on these stickers, unfortunately, so, yeah, anyway, it says it's the 1065 d made, so that's really cool, and also you got two little swivel casters on the front as well, which are also rubber coated, and finally, if you're wondering why this machine's a weird high heel shape, it's because it sits on the stairs, just like that, see how it hugs the stairs? That's exactly how it stays on the stairs. The hose is also removable from the machine end, as you can see. And some DCL2s also had a sticker on here saying, say goodbye to the bag. And finally, on the one, there's a feature where you have two little clips on two little brackets that stick out. So you can basically park the machine like so onto the handle. Wasn't the most secure design, but it is something. It's a bit like a DC39 where the wand is angled instead of being upright. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. This is your host Power786 signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Take care and bye for now.